So I got the properties that I wanted and I still have 720 bucks and they'll not be able to develop on their properties. So pretty much at this point I've won the game. Um, it's just a matter of time. So let's just go ahead and play. $450 for me. $400 for me. $750 for me. Another set. Nope, that's me. That's right. I rolled. That would have been funny, though. Yeah, pay myself. Asshole. And really what you want to do is try to get the properties in between the jail and the go to jail squares um, around that edge. It's ultimately going to be your best monopolies. And the reason is because uh, that's where most people, that's where you end up, the players end up being on that, is that side of the board. Um, along, this, um, along this side here and this side here. Um, I personally like these orange ones a lot. I think these are probably the best properties in the game. Um, the reds are definitely in there, and so are the yellows. This isn't half bad. Um, but the problem with this is that uh, it's from jail. You can't roll a one, so you, would never, you wouldn't land on that from jail. And uh, it's not as probable that they'll roll a uh, three or four as it is um, them rolling a 6 or an 8 or 9. Uh, so there's a pro higher probability for them to land on the orange. Um, and then after they get up here, for them to land on one of these is pretty decent too. So um, these are my essential, essentially my startup properties. What happens is these down here, I mean, you know, the slumlord thing that's going on, this is just there so I can gobble up the houses. Uh, at a lower cost. It only costs fifty dollars to build a house. So it literally cost me a thousand dollars to put four houses on every one of these five properties, and that's it. And I'm tying up twenty houses. Uh, the the other remaining twelve houses I just put on here it cost me twelve hundred bucks. So you know, through and through, the only reason I really have this bottom area is mainly just to hoard the houses. Um, that's really the strategy of the game is to control your your opponents so that they can't they can't develop. Like see, he's got two monopolies. You know, he's got the monopoly, the greens, and the Boardwalk and Park Place here. Um, Yellow has this monopoly here, which is definitely a rock solid monopoly, but he can't develop on it because I'm tying up all the houses. Same thing here. Purple's got the purple. Somebody can't develop because I'm tying up the houses. Um, and that's the name of the game, really. Um, once you, If you play this style, um, you really only have two enemies. And your two enemies are two cards. One in Community Chest and one in Chance. Um, all they are is... Um, it's like if you land on Chance, you'll get a card that'll be like, make general repairs or some, some shit like that. And you gotta like, I don't know pay like $25 for each house you got and 100 bucks for every hotel you got and that um that card can kick the shit out of you sometimes but so you just got to be careful not to over invest um at the start but once it doesn't take long I mean you see I was at we started at 2000 after just working the trades and working property deals I ended up with like you know a couple hundred extra bucks um after that couple hundred extra bucks, I used all the money that I had pretty much to develop the properties. And once I developed the properties, the development of the properties cost me about 2200 bucks. And um, I still had uh, 700 bucks left or something like that. So I was doing all right. And then I they landed on a couple of my, couple of my uh, properties and had to pay me some rents. So I'm right back in there with, uh, with the bankroll. So now I don't have to really worry about if I get the uh, card, because even if I get the card, I have to pay one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred bucks. So I, I got that, and I'm not gonna have to worry about any like serious rents because nobody's able to build anything. 
So it's really just a matter of time uh, before I bankrupt one of them. And once I bankrupt one of them, I'll be able to... Well, essentially what will what'll happen is when you bankrupt them, I'll, I'll absorb their assets. Um, because they won't have enough money to pay me, so I just have to take everything that they own. Uh, once I do that, then it's just, you know, develop those with the money that I have. You know, we got to be careful again not to overinvest, though, in case you get that card. Really, that's all you got to worry about is that card. Or one of those two cards. But uh, big misconceptions, though, I mean, are like, you know... Boardwalk and Park Place, you know. Oh, Boardwalk and Park Place, so awesome. They're, they're fucking garbage. Um, I don't fuck with them. Um, the green ones, they're real fucking garbage. I really don't mess with those. It's just too much to invest um, for not enough of a, of a return. I mean, for instance, if I click on this property, you can see that, you know, it cost me $200 for a house. Um, you're really only going to start really banking if you get to the three house level uh so you end up a thousand dollar rent to get to a three house level in each one of these i mean that's nine houses that's eighteen hundred fucking dollars you got to invest just to get to the three house level um that's just too much money you know start low start here so you can tie up all the houses and what will happen is these houses will essentially get you a nice income um as the players land on it and it will bankrupt them because event they can't you you're not going to pay out as much money as they're going to pay you uh once you have built up a nice bankroll and you absorb a um you absorb another player's properties and assets um you'll take their bankroll whatever they got normally it's not too much cash um, and then you'll take their properties. You just more, uh, unmortgage the properties if they're mortgaged, and then you start to invest in those properties. Um, but I, I, you know, so I mean, the green and the blue, you know what I mean? Like, you know, poor walk park place and stuff. They're, they're good to have, but you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to start with those properties. Otherwise, you're just setting yourself up for failure. I mean, you could get lucky. Don't get me wrong. It's not, but I mean, the, the likelihood of it is just not. That's not as good. So. You go, people go to jail so much in this game. Um, that's why it's good to have... the. You got a lot of, you know, go straight to jail, do not collect $200, not pass go, whatever the fuck, you know? So, you know, with that being a situation or a, a certain aspect of the game that, you know, like you don't... If you have that row, like the, the green and the poor walk and park place... Um, a lot of times players don't even see that side of the board because they end up going to jail or they get like a pass, you know, go directly to go or whatever. So, you know, this side of the board is not is seen less than all the other sides. Um, and the two sides of the board that are that are touched the most are going to be this side and this side. So that's what those are the sides you really want to focus on um, developing properties first. Uh, the, and again, the only reason I do this lower side is just to hoard the houses. I have 4,600 now. The worst is when you, like, crush a player and he has, like, nothing left and then he lands on somebody's, like, shit-ass rent and then, like, that guy gets all his property. So I have to piss you off. Or, like, they land on income tax. And then, like, all their properties go back to the bank. 